I was personally running around listening to all these problems every day with inventory not delivered on time, inventory delivered to the wrong place and now it works like clockwork because we have an absolutely dialed in system for managing it all but because we invested in the system it means that only one person is required to manage that entire thing. Today we are going to share three unbelievable tools that will solve your inventory problems forever. I know every business around the world really struggles with their stock and their inventory and managing all those things and it can just become chaotic and out of control. Ryan here, he runs a super successful company here in Northern Ireland that is known all around the world for how they manage their stock and inventory. People come literally from all over the planet to see how they do it. And Ryan's going to share with you three tools today that by the end of the episode, you'll have everything you need to do the same. But Ryan... It wasn't always this way. Sure, it wasn't. No, it definitely <laughs> wasn't, Matt. Um, I'm really excited about this episode. So just starting off really quickly, if we rewind nine years, our factory, our production facility was an absolute disaster. Our inventory was scattered everywhere, all in different locations. We didn't know what we had. We didn't know when we were running out. We had three different versions of what was supposed to be the same thing. We, were, we had the wrong spec of components coming in. It was just a real struggle every day. And we just said, we need to fix this. We need to find a better way. Mm. And thankfully, on this podcast, in less than half an hour, we're going to tell everybody how we've done it. Unbelievable. So, I mean, sell us the dream, okay? So you guys have done huge amounts of work into solving this problem. Why should people care? Obviously, it's annoying. Every single business owner listening is nodding their head. <clears throat> but like... What is on the other side? Tell us about the benefits and the reward for the hard work you've done here. Yep, the benefits are, it's hard to explain the benefits. There's, there's so many benefits, but one of the benefits for me personally is it reduces so much much stress. Mm. It reduces so much stress. I was personally running around listening to all these problems every day with inventory not delivered on time, inventory delivered to the wrong place, the wrong spec, the wrong specification, uh, maybe the supplier didn't hold that stock or there are all these problems that we were dealing with all the time. And now it works like clockwork mm. because we have an absolutely dialed in system for managing it all T to the point where one person, we've only one person managing all of our inventory for our entire company. Crazy. And we have a lot of... We have a lot of moving parts, thousands and thousands of components, but because we invested in the system, it means that only one person is required to manage that entire thing. Class. And it means you as the owner, like how many business owners listen to this, <clears throat> end up getting in the car and having to run here and having to run there and having to do this. The most valuable person in the company, whose time is literally worth thousands of pounds if used properly per hour. You know, they're the ones that can create new ideas. They're the one that can drive the business. They're the one that can promote growth. And they're going and they're, you know, getting extra toilet roll or looking for a, a, a nut or a bolt or whatever it is. And once you're liberated from that, you can concentrate on things that only you can do as, a, as an owner. Exactly. I love the quote, systems will set you free. And that's what a good inventory system does. It sets you free. It allows you to focus on what's important instead of running around managing all the stock or the inventory. Class. So first tool is standardized location. Yes. Talk to us about this. What does that mean? So, so important. I want to make this so clear so everybody gets it. Every single component, doesn't matter if, you've, if you're in a factory environment, a warehouse environment, an office environment, we all have stuff, physical stuff that needs replenished all the time. Paper, ink, pens, stationery, um, supplies for building your product. We have to replenish those stuff on a daily and weekly basis. So it makes sense to have a really good system for managing all that. So the main thing is to have a dedicated location for exactly where that component lives. A dedicated location with a visual, with some type of visual control to say that's exactly where the A4 paper stays. That's exactly where the ink cartridges for the printer is. That's exactly where the plywood stays. Not, oh, it's over here today and somebody's moved it the next day and you have to ask Mary in the office where we keep the ink cartridges and there's all these conversations and fo phone calls and emails trying to figure out where the stuff lives or stays. Number one thing, dedicated location for every single component that you buy. Right. So let's take the example of the the A4 paper, right? So yep. every business on the planet has a printer. 
and we've all run into the issue where we've ran out of paper. Where the heck is it? Is it there? No, it's there. Try that stock cupboard. No, it's not on that one. Oh, actually, there's one in the boot of my car. Da, 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 da. So once everything has a standardized location, how do you then point people to that location? Let's say I'm at the printer and I'm like, ah, where is it? How, yeah. do you, how have you solved that? So we have something called a crumb trail. A crumb trail. It's basically a really small label with the exact location of where that inventory is held. So if you're standing at one of the printers in our office, there's a little small label on there saying restock from rack 3C row 2. Right. So that's what we call a crumb trail. And that tells you exactly where to go to restock. Mm -hmm. So if I started on my first day, I can feel successful in my role because I'm not asking people all these questions. Where do you get the paper? Where does the ink stay? Where, where? Crumb trail guides you to exactly where that's held. So once we go to the dedicated location, that's where the stock is held and that's where it's replenished from. So great. And you also don't need to hold that information in your head. So if you change the location and you change the crumb trail, exactly. you just immediately look where it is. Oh, it's there. It's 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 in B4 and you just go straight to there. No one's thinking, oh yes, it's, it might be in that row or check that aisle or maybe it's there. It's just kind of like, nope. We've just outsourced all that thinking to a little tiny label and to a standardized location and wham, bam, there you go. Yep, exactly. Class. Yep. So the second tool or the second way that people can help solve their inventory problems forever is something mad. And we do have some props here called a two bin system. Yeah. So for someone who's never heard of a two bin system before, can you just explain and walk us through what that actually is? Two bin system. You don't necessarily have to have a two bin system, but you must have some type of system for replenishing your stock. And we have found that this is the best way for, for th that works for us. This is what we call a two bin system. So we'll just hold it up in front of the camera so you can see it. So we've got a front bin and we've got a back bin with the same component in each. So when we finish all the components in the front bin, we then break into the back bin where there is a trigger point here which forces us to trigger uh, and replenish the, the, the order. Mm -hmm. So the benefits of a two-bin system is that you've got safety stock in the back bin to keep you going until the new delivery comes. Nice. So you never run out. Yeah. Like, I can't remember the last time we've run out of something. And it's really unheard of because any factory, any organization that I go into to help them with lean, it's one of their biggest problems. Yeah. They find it so hard to manage their inventory. Yeah. I'll give you a really simple example from a, a personal. So after Ryan teached me about two-bin systems, like I could apply this in loads of areas of my life. So yeah. if you open my bathroom cabinet, I have a two-bin system for my toothpaste. So I have literally have toothpaste standing there. There's one in the front, there's one in the back. And whenever the, tooth, the toothpaste is empty, I take that tube, I take it downstairs, I leave it on the kitchen table, and that will be like, oh, we need toothpaste, we need to add that to the shopping list. Yeah. But whenever I go to, to brush my teeth the next day, there's new toothpaste right there, ready to go. And then whenever we go to the shop, then you just put the new uh, stock of toothpaste behind it. So you never, ever run out of toothpaste. Yeah. The other thing was uh, our gas cylinder for our kitchen. So for our wee hob, you know, I just bought two gas cylinders because it used to be you would run out of gas. You'd be like, oh, no, we can't cook the dinner now. This is a nightmare. This is really bad. I have to run yeah. down to the shop. But now it's like, oh, we've just run out. I'll take the second cylinder reconnect it and then I'll take the empty cylinder and put it literally in the driver's seat of the car so next time I'm driving yeah. I say oh I gotta go and buy a new cylinder yeah exactly and that, you never run out That's like right. it's, it's like it's like <clears throat> tapping into like an infinite supply of everything that you own if you two bin it it's absolutely mad That's right that is we, we even have a, an Airbnb that we run yeah. as well and we've set up a two-man system for all the supplies that's needed class and it just makes our life so easy 100% you know? yeah so I mean one of the maybe someone listening to this they'll be like okay that's fine but like you don't understand I have 5,000 components to make my products like you know you want me to make shelving and racks and, and dedicated location and now you want me to have you know a two bin for everything is that not going to take up so much space like how do you how did you guys navigate that it is a common thing that people say once they see how we've set up our system but what I would say to that is that without a good inventory management system in place you're more than likely holding too much stock mm. you're, and you're taking up more space than you need <laughs> So by managing your inventory really, really well, you're probably going to free up space. Yes, the two bin system does take up a lot of space because you've got a front bin and a back bin, but the amount of space that you save by not holding stuff that you don't need is, is huge. So it probably balances it out, if not save space. Right, so what yeah. you're saying is 
yeah, it does take up a lot of space, but you know what else takes up a lot of space? Being a hoarder and ordering 3,000 blue rolls because you, you don't know have a better system to manage yeah. that. That's also going to take up a lot of space. That's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So standardized location, two bin system, and that leads us quite nicely into our third and final tool that we want to share today, which is this thing called Kanban. And Kanban is this mysterious, lean Japanese mystical thing that's really hard to wrap your head around unless you have it explained simply to you. So yep. Ryan, really simply, what is a Kanban card and how does it work? And you've talked about a trigger point. How does that all come together? Yep. So very, very basically and very simply, Kanban is a Japanese word for sign or signal. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm holding it up here in front of the camera. This is a Kanban card. And this is basically a signal to tell us that we need to do something. So in this case, it's telling us that we need to replenish this particular product. So it's basically a signal or sign to tell you to act. So Kanban should always be placed in a way that's a pull system. So if we look at this visual, this box in front of me here, I can't physically access these parts because the Kanban's in the way. Right. So I'm forced to pull the Kanban. Now I've got it on my hand and I'm like, okay, what do I do with this? So the first thing you do is drop it into a Kanban location point. Uh -huh. And we have like 10 of them around the whole facility. And the inventory manager will do a run around the factory twice a day and collect the physical cards, take them back to the inventory office and order the cards. And it sounds very, you know, back in time that we're still <laughs> using paper Kanbans, but, but it really, really works. Mm -hmm. And even if you visit some of the best manufacturers in the world, like Toyota, they're still dealing with paper Kanbans. And it's a system that seems simple, but it absolutely works. And we've been using the Kanban system now for almost nine years, and it's been brilliant for us. It's class. I love how you have it set up where you can't access the new stock until you take the Kanban and go and put it where the Kanban needs to go. Yes. That's that's the ultimate way of, instead of just, oh, I'll do it later, and then it, you don't do it later, and next thing you know, you're out of stock for that thing and it takes a few days for it to arrive. Yeah. Could you go into a little bit more detail on what is on that Kanban card? Because it is absolutely insane. Yeah, there's so much detail in this Kanban card and we can share the template with you. So the first thing is that there's an image of the actual part that we want to order. Mm. So straight away, there's there's clarity. You know, we know what we're talking about. We're talking about a, an M6 by 13 uh, nut. You know, it's really clear. There's an image of it. Everybody knows what we're talking about. That's the first thing. The second thing is the part description. We've got where it's used for. We've got the part number. We've got the supplier's name on there. You know, it's all these questions that people ask, where do we get them? Or what supplier do we use? Or how many should I order? Or do they deliver? Or do we collect it? All these answers are on the Kanban card. Class. Even to the point that we've got the price on the Kanban card. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. But one of the reasons that we have the price on the Kanban is that every single person in the company can see the value of everything mm. that they're ordering because we think it's it's good to share the value of how much a sheet of plywood is. So when you're cutting it and using it, you really respect it because that's £30 that I'm cutting. Yep. I really need to appreciate the cost and try and reduce, you know, make the most of the, the raw material as possible. So that's one of the reasons we share the, the cost of every single component on the Kanban to share that, to share the cost with everybody that uses and touches the product. Yeah. Uh, another thing on the Kanban is at the back, you can see the order history. So a question we might ask is, how often do we order this? The answer is there. Wow. <laughs> what is the supplier's lead time? The answer is here. This is the date we order it and it's the date that we get it delivered. Crazy. The other one is, what's the PO number? The answer is there. Is it an external Kanban or an internal Kanban? The answer is here. Uh, where does it go back to when we re when the delivery comes in? The location is on here. So all the answers are on this card. And we have, I think we've over 4,000 Kanbans in circulation now. And the system works so well because we're not running around asking each other all these questions. All the information is on here. Systems will set you free. Yeah. Interesting. I remember the last time I was up for a tour, one of the improvements that was shared in the morning meeting was, I think someone held up a Kanban card and they went, oh, I just went to restock part X. And uh, I noticed that because the price was on the Kanban card, it, it had actually gone up in, in price from the supplier. It was like £20 more expensive or whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, that made me think, oh, I wonder if there's somewhere cheaper where I can get that. Hmm. And they sourced it for like £40 cheaper from, yeah. from somewhere else. And I was like, mate, that is just something that would not have 
that attention to detail would not have been possible without the Kanban system you have in place. And you have just on even small parts, you know, you're, you're, you're saving money and you're improving efficiency and all that sort of thing. It's unbelievable. Yep. We have Kanban cards right down to the, like things like batteries, the, the double A batteries for the remote control for the TV in the conference room mm. has a Kanban. Wow. Because if we run out of batteries, that disrupts our flow. You know, imagine being in the middle of a meeting and the remote control doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the back of the remote control, there's a crumb trail to tell you exactly where to go and get it. Class. And sometimes when we talk about this type of stuff, people think we're crazy or it's, <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to so much detail. But what we would say is we're here to serve the customer. Right. So the customer is, a, is, a, is at the end of all the processes that we're doing. So we can serve the customer much better if we have all the inventory in place and everything managed really well. Sure. And what's crazier, having a Kanban card for batteries or the owner of the company running down to the shop and taking half an hour plus out of their day to go and get batteries for a remote control like? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time. <sighs> Unbelievable. Another question that kind of came into my head is, you know, for things that are too big to fit inside a bin, so you mentioned a sheet of plywood, you're not going to put that in a bin. Uh, yeah. So how do you use Kanban with like massive parts like that? Yep, so we call it a two-bin system, and it's not necessarily a physical bin. Mm -hmm. It is a bin in this case right in front of us because it's a small part, but as the parts get bigger, like sheets of plywood or really long lengths of steel, we have different versions of a, of a two-bin system. And in some points, it's not a two-bin system, but as long as you have a trigger point. So that may mean that the Kanban is attached to the last 10 components, so we're forced to physically trigger the Kanban before we break in to the last, uh, break into the safety stock. So yes, you're right, not everything fits in a physical bin, but it's that same thinking, that same concept. Everything has two locations and everything has a Kanban card. Right, so just, just so I make sure that I'm understanding, in the case of like a big sheet of plywood, I would use plywood, use another sheet, use another sheet, and then I would get to like 10 left and there'd be like a Kanban card or something on top of the 10th one. And then I can't, I can't get into it. I'm like, oh, I have a Kanban card, quickly put it somewhere. And then I'm in my safety stock and blah, 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 blah. Exactly. That's how it right. works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can see how that would save a lot of space, actually. Yeah. Instead of having, you know, <laughs> 2,000 sheets of plywood, it's like you can probably work it out based on how long it takes your supplier to deliver and that's how much stock you need and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I noticed on one of your other Kanban cards, you have uh, a secondary supplier. That's a nice idea. Yeah, that's another really good idea as well. So if the first supplier runs out, that was another question we kept asking ourselves. Oh, the suppliers ran out. Where else can we get these? Mm. Now the answer is on the Kanban. <laughs> the number one supplier and number two supplier. Yeah. And you have one person in managing the stock and inventory for your whole company. Yeah. That is insane. A company of similar size to us would have definitely two or three people managing the amount of components and goods in and outwards that we have. Yeah, Crazy. I remember something really dramatic one time up in the factory. You were um, really making a point for the tour that was there and you, you lifted a Kanban and you held it up and it was like a scene from a movie and you were like, this small, tiny, tiny, seemingly insignificant card here actually has the power to stop our whole company. Yeah. Talk to me about that. It does. When we introduced the Kanban system, we started in a communal area that a lot of people use just so we could train on Kanban. So we actually started in the stationery store because a lot of people used the stationery store. So we used that as a as a, a training, you know, a, as an example for how to train on Kanban. Mm -hmm. And I remember a few of the morning meetings back when we introduced Kanban, we said that Kanban, imagine Kanban like a, a 100 pound note or a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> hundred dollar bill. Yeah, for American <laughs> audience. Imagine this as money. You know, you would never walk through the office or the factory and see a 100 pound uh, bill, <laughs> notes, bill <laughs> 100 pound notes sitting below a workstation and just walk past it. You would never do it. Yeah. Well, then why would we walk past the Kanban? Mm. So the Kanban is probably more valuable than that 100 pound note because Kanban is, it is money. This has the potential to stop our entire factory. So when people have a Kanban in their hand, they're really, really aware of the importance of it. And everyone in the organization has to respect the Kanban. Right. Yeah. How do you go about uh, nurturing that level of respect? 
you know, because someone's new to the company, they're like, oh, it's just a bit of laminated paper. They don't realize that actually, you know, if that stock doesn't get reordered, it might stop the line. It might, you know, it could lead to thousands and thousands of pounds worth of, of loss in terms of waiting or defect or whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, well, it's continual teaching and training on Kanban. It's such a huge concept that it's really important that every single person in the company understands the Kanban. And one of the ways we've done that is at one of our morning meetings, after the meeting, I said, we're going to do a treasure hunt around the factory. And if you see anything abnormal, let us know. And I had a few 50 pound notes, like kind of put in different places around the factory. And everybody was finding these 50 pound notes <laughs> and bringing them back to the morning meeting and saying, oh, I got one. The, the, the key message that I was trying to get across and we did get across was that Kanban is money. Mm. You have to respect the Kanban like you respect the 50 pound note. You would never just leave a 50 pound note lying below a bench and walk past it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. same as you wouldn't do that for a Kanban card. Class. So three tools, a standardized location, a two bin system and Kanban cards. Yes. And by you implementing these three things into your organization over the last nine years, tell us again what this leads to. So we've already, things we've already mentioned is one person running stock, infinite supply of inventory. So things never, ever run out. Lack of stress for you. So your stress level has gone down. You're not running to the shop. How does this actually, what impact does this have on the customer? What impact does it have on your, your turnover or your profit and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, we, we always talk about being firefighter ready. So like a firefighter never knows what situation is going to come up. They could get any kind of phone call. You know, they have to be ready. One of the things that a good inventory management system does is makes us firefighter ready. It doesn't matter what order the customer throws at us, we know we have the supplies and stock to deliver. Mm. It's not a, oh, we can't deliver because we're running out of stock or our supplier didn't deliver. We're game on. We know we can supply because we have a really good system in the background managing everything. And the ripple effect of that goes through the whole organization is, is just crazy. The freedom, the mental capacity that we're freeing up is just huge. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of questions that don't need to be asked. Wow. And don't need to be answered because of a good inventory system. Sure. And I'm just thinking if, if I started working in your factory tomorrow, yeah. I would exactly know where everything is. If someone's like, here, Matthew, quickly, go and get a, a X type of bolt. I'd be like, I have no idea. And I, but I could just see, oh, there's the crumb trail. Okay. And I'll go to there. Oh, and here's, I'll just lift it out of the bin. Okay, perfect. Oh, look, uh, there's, there's none in this bin. Well, what am I going to do now? It's like, oh, okay, well, I have this card in my hand now. What do I do with this card? It's just, it's so <laughs> yeah. natural. Like it flows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it should flow from the workstation right to the supplier. Mm. There should be a trail and there is a trail. Yeah. For every single component. It's class. Yeah. Did it take a bit of time to figure out how much of each item you should keep in stock? Yes, it, it did. Very much so. I bet it did. A lot of it goes by minimum order quantities from suppliers, which you have ah, to kind of work around of as course, well. yeah. So we're continually, and that's the job of the inventory manager, we're continually moving uh, uh, components from a smaller bin maybe to a bigger bin because the minimum order quantity has changed or our uh, or production has increased and we need more of a certain product. So we're always tweaking and improving the system. But yes, it depends a lot on supplier constraints, on mm. lead time, on uh, minimum order quantity. So we work around all that yeah. and, and try and perfect it. Yeah. Awesome. One of the things we always do with every single episode we we publish is we want it to be really actionable and we want it to be there to be easy first steps. Yeah. So we've obviously <clears throat> we've covered a lot today for the business owner listening who's like, I want this, I need this in my life, this yep. is gonna change everything. What's the first step that they can take? The the first step I think is we have a really good video on YouTube on the Lean Made Simple YouTube channel that explains this in more detail and you can visually see it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to stress the point that this was the first thing we done when we started implementing lean manufacturing. We sorted out our inventory. And once we done that, everything else seemed to flow mm. because it's one huge thing that you don't have to worry about anymore. Yeah. And you can focus on other things. So I would advise any company that wants to become more organized and create more flow 
in their organization start with a really good inventory management system. That's number one, I think. Yeah, and we'll put a link to that video in the description of wherever it is that you're listening to this episode. Just click it and and you will be taken right there. Uh, the, well, the thing I really liked is how you rolled out Kanban in one area first. Yeah. That was cool. Can it was, yeah. Dig into that a wee bit deeper. So way we done it in one area was to teach and train on Kanban mm-hmm. because I learned very very early on, thankfully, the power of Kanban, but also that it's a people-based system. It mm-hmm. really is. And there's probably people listening or watching to this thinking, but why do you not use software or why have you not got a computerized system? And it's back to the Toyota thinking of we have to earn the right to digitize. Mm. And we are moving into that this year. It's one of our goals for this year is to digitize the inventory, but we first must start with a physical system. Until the physical system is perfected, we can't move to digital. So and good. We, we have the physical at a really good place where yeah. this year we are going to move digital. Awesome. And the in terms of like templates for Kanban cards and and bins and, you know, this red Kanban holder thing, like where can we where can we get that? Yeah, we've got all that. We can share that with anybody who wants to implement this system uh, on the Lean Made Simple website. There's a shop where you can buy all the bins. You can buy the Kanban holders. You can see the video on YouTube on the Lean Made Simple YouTube channel of exactly how we've set it all up. Uh, it's all there. Brilliant. So that I, I, we've kind of almost created like three layers there. It's watch a video, access some of the tools. And I know that you've got a, a very exciting announcement. This is a, a world exclusive first ever <laughs> uh, thing that you're gonna you're gonna roll out now. Yeah, it's just something we've been working on over the past few weeks and months, and we're proud to announce that we now offer a Kanban tour, so people can physically come to our factory, and it's a dedicated Kanban tour where you learn everything about Kanban, mm. and you'll leave that tour with all the tools you need to implement a really good Kanban system in your organization. Class. Yeah. And that's, I assume, very, very, I haven't done the Kanban tour yet. Is it different than the than your usual kind of it, tour? It, it is different, very different. It's really deeply focused on Kanban. Yeah. And it's practical steps that you can take away that day. So it's how to make a Kanban card, how to set up a two-bin system, how do you actually make the labels, mm. how do you set up the bin system, where does the bin sit? We advise on that whole thing and you will go away with a list of notes and actionable steps that you can use to implement a really good business change in inventory system. That's so funny. I just had a picture in my head. I don't know if you've ever been to like a theme park and there's like the big long lines yeah. to go on a roller coaster and it's like uh-huh. 40 minutes or 50 minutes or whatever it is yeah. and then you can you can literally get like a fast track card and just go <laughs> straight to the front of the queue I feel like that camp on yeah. is just like go straight to the front of the queue you know skip a few years and just go straight to the front and, <laughs> and learn from all I hope you don't mind me saying this like learn from all your mistakes as well it absolutely is we've made all the mistakes there's yeah. no point everybody else making them yeah yeah, yeah 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 awesome well thank you very much for making it all the way through to the end uh, this was a, a bit of a different episode for us, but I, I think it's absolutely class. It's really yeah. exciting. We're responding to a lot of your feedback. You know, we get tons of emails and tons of comments all the time saying how much uh, this podcast means to you and, and how much value it brings to your business. And so, you know, one of the things that that we hear all the time is, please do want an inventory or I don't know, I'm really struggling with stock and all this sort of stuff. So please keep your feedback going. If there's any way we can improve the show uh, to make your listening experience better and to make it more valuable for you, please, we're all ears. We have an improvement mindset, as we always say. And our goal is to uh, serve you as much as possible. And so the only way we can do that is if you talk to us and uh, we'll be doing a Q&A episode pretty soon. So please send your questions over. We'll put a link in the description if you want to send a voice message into the show as well. And we can play that on air. And uh, other than that, really, really appreciate it. If you want to find out more about all things we talked about today, including the new Kanban tour, you can click a link uh, wherever you're listening uh, to this episode. And uh, other than that, Ryan, really, really appreciate it. Thank you for, as always, just sharing the value bombs. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Good job.